So hello, uh, thanks for coming to uh, this presentation. Uh, my name is Jan Krupa and uh, today I'd like to tell you something about collecting data from uh, Internet, of, Internet of Things networks uh, using Sigfox network. So first something uh, about me, I'm working uh, for SUSE for a couple of years. I'm uh, in the open build service team uh, working mainly on Studio Online. but. The today's talk won't be related to any of that. It's actually related to something which I'd like to do in my free time that's mostly tinkering with different gadgets. And uh, recently I've been playing with uh, different, uh, different gadgets which communicate over various of protocols. So I will give you some info about how I started with it. Uh, a few years ago, I uh, wanted to do some temperature monitoring in my house, so that means uh, have a couple of different temperature sensors on various places. And I was looking for a way how to do that. Um, so, and uh, actually there, there was a one product which just, which just came to the market uh, that was a small chip, uh, which allowed me to do that for quite some low amount of money. It was called ESPA266. It's like $2 gadget, which has Wi-Fi connectivity. It allows you to connect uh, some sensors to that, and then you can transfer it to via local Wi-Fi connection in your house. It allows uh, some uh, deep sleep, so it can uh, be alive on battery for quite some time. And uh, this, this was working quite good. Um, but then uh, I was uh, starting to think about how I can use this even in the areas where there is no Wi-Fi connection. Uh, that means outside of the house usually or somewhere in the nature. And um, So uh, the uh, obvious choice for that uh, or something which people would start to be looking at would be uh, GSM, 3G and LTE networks. Uh, because the coverage is on most of the places uh, around, uh, but there are some issues with that. Uh, the first issue which uh, comes to my mind is a uh, problem with uh, uh, power drain. Uh, usually transmitters for those uh, networks require a lot of power, so you need to have quite huge battery or some power source. Uh, the other problem is that it's not that cheap to uh, maintain uh, the sensors connected to each of them connected to the network separately. So what you usually end up doing is to have some gateway which uh, is connected to the internet via, for example, 3G or LTE, and then uh, there is some local Wi-Fi connection for the sensors, or you can use some low power network like NRF uh, modules for Arduino or stuff like that. Recently, uh, there, is, there has been some development uh, in this area, and there are new networks coming to the market. Um, in, uh, recently, it's mostly Sigfox network, LoRa networks, and LTEM. Uh, the first two are already rolled out to uh, most major markets all around the world. Uh, that means that the networks are running and you can use them. Today I'd like to talk uh, more about the Sigfox network because uh, it's very easy to use. Uh, the main difference between uh, Sigfox and LoRa network is uh, that Sigfox network is proprietary but it has low hardware cost. LoRa network is open uh, so that means that you can even run your own network if you want. And the LTEM networks are not really deployed yet much. Uh, this is uh, a table which I found, a uh, table from Nokia. Uh, I think it's w about one year old, so some of the data could be outdated on that. But it summarized the status of and the differences between those networks and in terms of bandwidth and uh, if they operate in license or unlicensed uh, radio spectrum. So, something about Sigfox network. Um, this is definition from Wikipedia. Uh, what's important in this is that uh, it operates on unlicensed band. That means that uh, you don't need to pay something for using the radio band. Uh, there are two different frequencies. So one is for Europe, one is for US. That, uh, that's because of different uh, radio spectrum allocation in different countries. Uh, I mentioned Europe and US. Uh, 
some countries are using the European one, some countries uh, the US one, even outside uh, those territories. Um, as for the coverage, uh, this is a snapshot from Sigfox website uh, taken, I think, yesterday. So as you can see, most of the Western and Central Europe is already covered. Uh, the countries which are not probably will be in the near future, I guess. Uh, the network itself operates, uh, it's, it's like a centralized network. It's operated by a French company called Sigfox. And this company gives licenses to different operators in different countries. So, for example, in Germany, it's also operated by Sigfox company. But, for example, in Czech Republic, it's operated by a simple cell uh, network provider. Um, now, you're probably uh, asking what you can transfer over the network. Uh, if you look at this, uh, you would be surprised that this is quite a low amount of data. So the uplink message limit is 12 bytes. That means that in one uh, one message you send to the network from the from the device, you can transfer just 12 bytes, and you're limited for 140 messages per day. That's like uh, one message every roughly 10 minutes, and the downlink message that means the messages which are transferred from uh, from the server to the device are limited for per per day four messages per day, and uh, they're just eight bytes. Also, uh, these messages needs to be initiated from the device itself, because the network doesn't need to know where the device is actually is, so the device needs to ask the network if there is some some data payload for, for, for it. Now, what's uh, quite good about these networks is the pricing, because uh, if you compare that uh, with using uh, like a GSM network, uh, for GSM networks you would usually have to pay like five euros a month, uh, depending on the country, but uh, roughly about that. Uh, with the Sigfox network, uh, you pay something between half a euro or euro per month, and if you get the hardware, usually there is one year free subscription, so if you want to play with that, like from a developer perspective, uh, that's pretty cool because you don't even have to uh, like register somewhere and pay some monthly fee, you can just think with that. Also, what's, what's interesting is that if, uh, for example, I'm not sure about Germany, but for example, the Czech operator, if you tell them that you are a developer, they will usually give you free license to use the, use the network, if you tell them what are you working on. Uh, another cool feature is that the rooming is already uh, included in the cost, that means that if you are uh, running the device in one country, you can use it anywhere else. And uh, it's free of charge, or better say, included in the monthly fee. Now, uh, the Sigfox hardware, that's uh, the part which communicates with the network. So I, there are a couple of different hardwares and new hardwares coming to the market uh, recently. I uh, chose two to show you how, how it looks like. So the first one, is uh, is uh, something which is usually used with Arduino or something with the same interface. Uh, the price is pretty low. Uh, the chip itself costs uh, four euros. And if you want it with a breakout board, you have to pay 24 euros. But uh, you don't, of course, if you build something on top of that, you're fine just with the, ch with the chip. Uh, the other hardware is a uh, little bit more pricier, uh, but it has much more features, actually. And this is something which I will be showing the live demo on today. Uh, this one is based on the ESP32 chipset. Uh, that's a successor of the ESP8266, which I was talking about in the beginning. Uh, there is a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on that. Uh, it supports IPv6. Hardware-wise, it uh, it's also pretty cool for that kind of device. Uh, there is a half of a uh, megabyte of RAM and four megabytes of flash memory. You can also extend with the SD card. And uh, as for connections, uh, you can connect a lot of things, uh, like digital, digital connections as well as analog ones. And this is like the schema. You probably cannot read it, but it's on their website. So now as for the practical stuff, uh, how you can use the device. Um, 
So first thing you have to do is to uh, actually register to the Sigfox network. That means that when you receive any device for using in the Sigfox network, you need to find out uh, two IDs of the device. The first one is called ID, the other one is called PAC. Uh, so it's basically two numbers which uniquely identifies the device. So for, uh, for this CP device which I'm talking about, you do that this way uh, from Python. And uh, after that, you open the Sigfox backend website where you choose uh, which manufacturer you are using. Then uh, you choose the country where you, where you using the in, and then you enter those two numbers. As for the registration, you just have to, have to enter your name and email address, I think. They don't require much details about you. And uh, so after, after you do this process, uh, everything is set up, and uh, you can start using the device. So first thing is uh, how, how you can access the device is to connect to, to it via USB. Uh, via the breakout board. Uh, it actually works like a virtual serial port, serial port over USB. And uh, you can instantly have a uh, MicroPython terminal over, over that. The other option is you can connect via Wi-Fi. So if you leave it in the default settings, it acts as an access point and uh, there is a Telnet and FTP server running there. The Telnet server does the same thing as the serial port, so you can uh, turn it there and uh, you are immediately on the MicroPython command line. Uh, the FTP server could be used for various things, uh, mostly if you want to upload some boot up scripts, so if you turn on the device to run some Python commands, you can do that via FTP. Now, what's also important after you all of this is to tell the Sigfox portal what it has to do with your data. Because now you can transfer the data from the device to the Sigfox network, but the Sigfox portal still doesn't know what you want to do with that. So you have to configure something called callbacks, um, and the Sigfox portal can uh, do various things with that. So the first, probably the easiest thing you can do is to tell it just to send you an email. That means that every time the portal receives some data, it will send you an email, and you can configure the structure of the email in, uh, on the callbacks page. The other option is that there could be some HTTP request sent to your website, and uh, that uh, triggers some script on your server. Or there are some connectors to Amazon Web Services and other clouds as well. So the options are quite huge. And uh, as for this particular device, there is uh, also a possibility to, for direct connection between the devices. That's not part of the Sigfox network, but it's supported by the PyCom CP, uh, CP device. Um, okay, so now I'm in the part where I'd like to try the live demo. So I am hope that it won't fail. So I, I have the device here, so I will connect the webcam. Okay, so. Okay, so. Uh, so this is the device, and I'm connecting it to the USB port. And you can see that the LED is flashing, and hopefully it will be connected to the network. And now what I will do is that I will connect via serial port to, to the device. Oops. Um, should I increase the font size or is it okay? Is it readable? Bigger. Okay. Yeah, I, 
I really tried, but it doesn't work for this terminal. <laughs> Okay. So um, basically I have a code snippet which I will just copy paste to the serial terminal and uh, then I will show you uh, the email client with the message which was receive received there. So it should be transmitting the data to uh, the Sigfox network. What I'm not sure about is if there will be signal. I actually tried it uh, today on the hotel and not really here, but let's see. Okay, so I have a slight problem with the network connection here, but uh, what I will show you is uh, the mail which I tried uh, yesterday. It's the same same uh, message which I sent, just different date. So this is how it will look like. On so e this is like the the callback configured for email uh, email message, and. Uh, you can do the same thing for uh, transmitting it by the HTTP ATI or HTTP API or different way. Uh, we'll go back to the presentation. So this is basically the code snippet. And uh, this is how the uh, email message will look like. So uh, that's basically it. Uh, what I can recommend, if you want to play with this, uh, I actually create a blog entry with all of the comments you need to start with using the, this device. Uh, so you can find it on uh, my blog on this address. And uh, if you have some questions, I will be happy to answer them. Okay, Wolfgang. Oh, micro. So, um, do you know if there's, in, in the specifications, if there's a maximum current you can basically um, connect, or if you connect more sensors to that device and the sensors get powered through the device, is there a maximum current, basically, or? Uh, I'm not sure about the current, but uh, as for uh, the way how we can power the device, uh, it's possible to power it either via 3.3 or 5 volts. But as for the current which you can take from the device, from the sensors, I'm uh, not really sure about that. If uh, there's, if it's like a complete pass through through the device without the device doing something with it, or if there are some restrictions. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm 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 not completely sure about this. So. Okay, thanks.
So um, I didn't catch it, but uh, you mentioned that um, the costs for the for the um, access to the network is uh, 0.5 or to one euro per month. But is it per device or per um, I don't know account? Uh, how is it built exactly? Uh, yeah, so I think the pricing is still not completely clear because uh, most of the providers uh, give uh, like a specific pricing depending on how many connected devices you have. So like in some countries I found that they don't even list any prices on the websites of the local providers. In some countries they list it somewhere they say it's roughly between the 0.5 euro to 1 euro per connected device, like per one device connected to the Sigfox network. But since the network is just starting in a lot of countries, I think they are mostly checking the market to find out what is the price people are willing to pay, I guess. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so, so a lot of the providers doesn't really list uh, specific pricing. It should be s somewhere around that. So I guess they are trying to target the market where uh, something cheaper than like the GSM or things like that. So and try to push people to connect directly to devices without using any gateway. So it would be affordable to put it everywhere. Okay, and one more thing. Uh, how I, um, it's kind of hard to imagine for me uh, how the infrastructure looks like. Uh, so uh, they I, uh, they are kind of sharing the uh, infrastructure with the mobile phone operators, or they have something own. Uh, yeah, so this is also uh, different from country to country. I can I, I know that for example in Czech Republic, what they do is that they partnered with uh, local like T-Mobile, uh, which is the local uh, GSM provider. And uh, so they are using their some of their base stations to uh, create the network, but of course they have to uh, use completely new hardware. But they are just using their pl the places where they have the base stations to make the network coverage. Uh, the the difference between uh, this network and, uh, for example, LTE or uh, or other uh, mobile networks is that it's quite low frequency, so it's easier to make the coverage even with less amount of base stations. And also the speed is quite low, so uh, th they need much much less base stations to cover much bigger area. So, But that also probably decreased the cost a bit. Okay, thank you very much. Um, is there any way to find out if the device is connected to the network? I mean, from like checking on the website, or is there some API? Uh, you cannot really find out if the device is connected right now because, the, as far as I know, the device doesn't really register to network when you turn it on. The device, uh, what you can see on the on the on the Sigfox portal is the last location of the device with, uh, but it's not really that much uh, specific because uh, it's just made by the triangulation between the base station. So it's uh, tens of kilometers range. So th that's just rough location. But at least you can find out which country it is in. <laughs> And uh, you can uh, also find the, the, the signal level uh, which uh, the base station was connected to with the, with the, with the, with the device uh, during the time when the last message was transceived from the device. So uh, you will s you will see the signal level, the location, like rough location, and the time and date when this happened, and then of course the data payload which you transferred from the device. But you cannot really do uh, like some real time tracking of the device, and I don't think this will be implemented because uh, the bandwidth in the network is quite low and once you have like a lot of devices you cannot really transmit a lot of data and that's actually the reason why there is the 140 messages per day limit because if you have like a lot of those devices connected in the same time then you will jam the network so uh, okay thanks what, what, what are you what are you can actually do is to connect a gps device to the uh to the, to the whole thing and then you can transfer the gps coordinates in in the in the message you are transferring to the Sigfox network, but that's something which is not really connected to the Sigfox network. That's like you can transfer this <laughs> this data. So uh, I saw some some application of this for 
uh, some car, car alarm system where they connected the Sigfox module with the GPS device to track the car if it's stolen. So it's something similar which you can do with the GSM gateway, but uh, this could be uh, slightly cheaper and uh, it will dry, drain less power. So it's one of the options which you can use it for, for example. Okay, no other questions? Okay, thank, thanks a lot for coming, and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>